What's going on, people? It's your boy Nando. You know what it is. It's the Pound for Pound Boxing Show in association with Seconds Out Coffee. Today, got a very special guest. He's back from Fight Camp Week 3, August 13th. It's Dave Coldwell's very own Hopi Price. Let's get Hopi on and see what we can talk about. Because his next fight, his last performance, and a lot more. Let's see if we can get Hopi on. How you doing, Hopi? I'm all good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Just first of all, thank you for taking your time to speak to us today. It's an honor to get you on. We've been been fans of yours for a long time um, since your debut. So it's great to have you on. Thank you very much. I appreciate you for having me. Amazing. Um, first of all, how's camp? How's training going? You know, it's good. You know, um, we don't really do camp. So I've been training a very long time. So I feel like... I've been, I've been waiting for a date for a long time, so I've been ready to go for the past couple of weeks, but um, I'm already super fit, so it's just about keep ticking over now and uh, preparing for August 14th. Brilliant. Um, your last performance was obviously back in uh, February, right? Josh Warrington. February. Lara, um, a very eventful night that was. Um, you, you got a convincing win against uh, Daniel Mendoza. Just give yeah. us your analysis of um, your performance that night. Um, I think it was a good performance considering obviously the late change of opponent. Um, I was preparing for someone quite bigger, um, a bit of a tougher test on paper, and then to have it changed last minute to Mendoza it was well everyone seen he was really small. Um, it was a bit awkward because I, after twenty, thirty seconds of, of the first round was sort of um going to survival mode some of these some of these boxes from from the, the other country so um, I think he was looking to survive and I was trying to open him up and prize him open. But um, I think overall it was a good performance. Dave was happy with me, Eddie was happy with me. So another one in the bag for and I'll move on to the next. Brilliant. How do you prepare mentally? Like, you know, you, you just said you prepared for someone bigger. Obviously, mm. someone smaller doesn't necessarily mean he's going to be an easier opponent. It could be faster, yeah. could be more slicker. Did you know anything about this last minute opponent coming in? Well, it's not even so much the change of last minute, obviously, from tall to short. It's not so much that. It's, um, to be honest, it, my opponent pulled out, I think, it was a week, week and a half before the show. And then they were asking some good fighters still still to fight. And they were still turning these fights down. So I think it wasn't until maybe the Monday, and I was fighting on the Saturday, that they didn't have an opponent locked, locked down. So... For someone who's only had three fights and prepared and been training for weeks and in the back of your mind not to know if you're still, you might you may not be boxing at the end of the week. And to have all that going on, to deal with it as well. As well. And uh, our, my mum wasn't too well as well at this time when I was having having this fight. So to, to deal with all that, I think I think I showed like maturity beyond, beyond the years I am and just got on with it and, and still went there and done the job. Yeah, um, we saw what happened with Ellie Scott. You know, her her opponent yeah, was exactly. out. They couldn't even get someone in, and poor Ellie couldn't couldn't fight that. Fight. So you were quite lucky to they, that they found you an opponent. Yeah, so quite it was lucky, good. obviously, with um, with COVID going on, it's it's even hard to get these opponents over from the other countries. So yes. that's why we, we was looking to to fight someone from here in the UK. Um, a lot of them didn't take the fights, so. They managed to get someone last minute, and and thankfully they did. Um, but in the back of your mind, you still definitely don't know if you're boxing. Am I boxing? Am I boxing? Is it this one? Yeah, this one's confirmed. No, it's not him. Now he's pulled out. This one's not agreed. So overall, I think it was a good experience because it could happen later on in in your career. And I've had to deal with that already. So it's another box ticked. If it ever does happen again, I've already been there, done that, and I'm prepared for it. Of course, hundred percent. Um, so now you're back August fourteenth, and what event you're you're part of Fight Camp? Um, great, great three shows that any of the the first question is sum up your feeling when you got told you're gonna to be part of this event. Well, what actually happened was is I was supposed to be boxing. Um, I think it was this this weekend actually it was in the, it was in Italy, but the show okay. got put, the show's been put back over I think there might be one of the fans on the show or whatever else so um, that didn't happen and then um, I got a call I think it was off Dave actually about 
through the day when England was playing. I was actually watching the England match. And he said, uh, we're going somewhere nice tomorrow. So I said, where are we going? So he said, um, we're going to London for the matchroom fight camp launch. So we went down there. And literally, I'm waiting about 10 minutes before the press, press conference and checks my phone. And, and there I am, August 14th. And then 10 minutes later, I'm on the stage doing the press conference. I didn't actually know that everything was confirmed and I was boxing. I had, I had a bit of a... No, I, I did. I did think I was boxing. They didn't mention it to me. They said, "Oh, we're going to try and get you on fight camp," but it wasn't hundred percent. And then just to finally just check out my phone, it was a bit of a shock. So then straight up done the press conference, and uh, I'm glad, finally glad that I've got got the date now, and it's all set in stone. There's none. Oh, you may be boxing here. You may be boxing there. It's it's definitely on. So um, I'm looking forward to it. I experienced fight camp the first time. It was a brilliant experience, but um, this time I think it's going to be a lot, lot better because there's going to be some fans there. So, yeah, um, I, I haven't boxed in a, a year, two years since the fans has been. So I'm looking forward to the fans getting back and having that bit of buzz back. But it, it looked absolutely amazing because you know the only time you ever see like a match who fights together is when there's an event and you know everyone's backstage and so on. But to have nearly everyone part of Matchroom in one garden is just absolutely amazing. And you saw, you know, some fireworks nearly happened between Conor Ben and Mark who and stuff. Yeah. So it was a massive risk there. So it, it just looks absolutely amazing. And to tell you last minute, you know, that you find it out like that. Some boxers like to know, obviously, because they, like, if I was a boxer, I would, knowing how I am, I'm quite confident Tell me ten, one minute before getting on stage, or oh, by the way, you're going on stage. Are you the, that type as well? It I'm that type of person. I'm, I'm prepared to go whenever, wherever. Um, I think that helps about how I've been been brought up. I've always been brought up that way. And as as an amateur, I took fights on short notice. Um, I, bo I boxed in all the major world and European championships, the Youth Olympic Games, and you actually don't know who your opponent is. You've never seen them box before. You just get in there and sort of you've got to work out yourself. And for me, I don't need to watch my opponents. I don't need to to know. I'm always ready. I'm always in the gym, so I'm I'm always ready to go. So if I if they picked up that phone call and said you've got to fight next week, I'm I'm ready. Brilliant. I like that mentality. Do you know? Do you know who your opponent is, or they still haven't um, got yet? I don't know who the opponent is yet. No, um, it hasn't been confirmed. I think um. Dave, Eddie, and obviously the matchmakers are working on it, but um, I'm sure it'll be a, another step up. Um, I've been progressing and taking step ups each fight, so hopefully it's another step up. Um, I don't think I'm too far away from boxing for my first title, so I think um, a couple of fights time, then then I'll start boxing for the belts. Then. I'm glad you mentioned the belts. Before I get onto the belts, um, I like to ask my guest their prediction of um, some of the, 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 the events that they are part of. So you're part of the Josh Paul Watsi Bolotnik um, uh, one. I think that's going to be an amazing fight. That's going to be fireworks. Do, not to step on anyone's toes, but do you have a uh, prediction for this fight as a boxing fan? Do you know what? I think it's a brilliant fight and it's, and it's a big step up for Boatsi. Um It's a very tough fight. One what? He's he's never he's never actually been asked many questions yet as a pro, but I think um, under the guidance of Virgil Hunter, he's a brilliant trainer and he really knows his boxing. Luckily, um, he took his time out to to have a chat over dinner with me when Lerone boxed in was it Manchester. He actually come over and and had a chat with us over breakfast. So that man's knowledge on boxing is unbelievable, and to have someone like that in your corner. I think Boatsy is only going to go from strength to strength now, and uh, yeah. I think that's definitely the best best thing and best move for his career. And I, and I think um, he'll, he, we will put on a good performance, even though it's going to be a tough tough fight. I do think he'll come out the winner. Brilliant. Um, I think it's going to be an amazing main event. Um, I think on paper, looking at Bolotnik's last um, last performance, it could be his toughest opponent because. At first, I was there when he fought Raymond. Um, what was the name of the opponent? Raymond. Is it Raymond? Raymond. Is it Raymond? No, it's not Raymond Ford. It's someone else. But he fought someone which he he managed to beat in the later rounds. And the guy was complaining that it was a low blow. It wasn't. But it was a great fight. And then when he made his comeback after the injury, he had a bit of a scare against the other guy as well. And um, and he just made a he just 
all the questions about him in the last fight, he just literally put them to bed with that destiny knockout. So Definitely. it's going to be fireworks. Definitely. It's going to be a brilliant fight. I look forward to it. What I want to know is, what's it like being trained by uh, Dave Caldwell, someone who is well-known and respected in, in the boxing world? Um, it's good. I think much for a better trainer than Dave. But um, I think, obviously, to other people, they'll look and think, it's Dave Caldwell, he's, he's, he's this and he's that. But to us, he's just, just Dave, where he, we've got like sort of like a family bond. We're all very close in the gym and see each other every day. I probably spend more time with Dave than I do most of my family members because we actually are seeing each other every day so uh, he's a brilliant coach and he really knows his boxing and i've only been there about two years now as a professional but i think i've improved leaps and bounds and i think um he's definitely the right man to take me to the top yeah 100 percent. he's got the experience to bring everyone to the top you saw what he did with tony Bailey as well you've seen now what he's done with Lerone richards another another person do you, do, you, do you see that as inspiration, seeing that Lerone just captured the, the European belt as well? And also, also Jordan Hill, he's got a few belts as well. Do, do them two, having them two as stable mates, does that give you inspiration? Yeah, the gym's flying at the minute, you know. Lerone just won the European title. Jordan's ranked number, I think, five by the WBA. Yeah. He's just been made mandatory. He's going to be fighting for the European title next as well. And they've Amazing. already picked up a couple of titles, so... The, the gym is literally flying at the minute. Um, I ain't got any belts yet, but I'm sure I will do in the future. I'll be hot on the heels very soon, so beware, boys. I'm going to catch them up. <laughs> I'm glad you brought up the belts, like I said before. Um, the the English belt is vacant. Is that some it's a belt that's in your in your in your sights at the moment as well in your division? Yeah, I see, uh, it's just become vacant. Um, I think I'm sure maybe next month. I think two people's boxing for it. I don't quite know who it is yet, but um, definitely I think um, after one or two fights, I'm, I'm ready to fight for that belt and uh, I'd like to fight whoever's got it at the time. So whoever has got it, when Dave and Eddie says, right, you're ready to go for the titles and um, it's bring on all comers. Brilliant. I'm not trying to get you to um, call the one out. But obviously, you're in a division where domestically, whoever you fight in the, let's say in the top 10, it's just going to be a cracking fight. Are you, were you, apart from looking at the tiles, are you looking for those hard R and domestic fights? You know, you've got the likes of Ramez Mahmoud, former Southern Area champion. You've got Reese Edwards, you know, um, people in the caliber. Would you be looking to fight them kind of, kind of people in the top 10 eventually? Yeah, I think um, Ramez Mahmoud is. I think that is who is boxing for the English title next, I think. Um, I think that may be in sometime in July. Um, I, I'd love to fight. I'd love to fight him. You know, he's a, he's a, he's a good fighter. And um, I'm not one of those who likes to bypass things. You know, I'd like to do it the proper way, the old school way. If I can pick up all the belts along the way to the top, I think that's the best way to do it. I think uh, not many people appreciate it, but when you look back on your career, if you win the English, the British, the Commonwealth, the European and the World title, you've literally cleared up it. Um, it's something I've done as an amateur. I won every every single title, so I'd like to do the same as a professional. So, if the opportunity does come up to do that, then I'm willing to take it. I'm glad you said that because I I believe a, a boxer, especially a young boxer like yourself, should take that old that traditional yeah, route, South, yeah Southern area English, uh, British, you know, maybe pick up a couple international belts Definitely. for the Commonwealth European. Carl, Carl Frock made a comment about that after Josh Kelly lost to. Um, Avenisian as well. He said that you know, by going past all these belts again, straight for the European, you don't you don't learn your trade because the Euro no. people don't understand how, how much is, of a bigger game. level the European is compared to you know British Definitely. and English. I think nowadays you see a lot of fighters. What they do is they they sort of have a couple of fights and some of them even bypass British level. You know, I think there's some there's, it's not so much British level, but there's some world class operators in the same division both in Britain. Yeah. And instead of fighting for the British, the Commonwealth and, and battling out that way, they sort of um, find a different route, try and get mandatory to fight for another title. So, um, some people it works for, some people are, they, they hold the position and obviously they get the world title shot and it's, it's down to them if they take it or not. But um, if I do get the opportunity to do it the old-fashioned way, then the traditional route, then I would like to do so. I think um, 
you may have to have a few tougher fights, but that's only going to bring you on as a fighter. If you're a confident fighter and you believe you'll you'll win them fights and you get through, then it's going to work better for you in the long run. Yeah, totally agree. And I and I, and I personally think it's an honour to go win the Southern area, the British, the English um, title as Definitely. well. Definitely. When you look back on your career, like like I said, um, then then you actually can can look and pick up. I believe um, Billy Joe Saunders, I think, a fight from from the traveling community, he won the English British. I don't know if the English. I don't think he won the English. No, I'm not the Southern English. Area, Southern area, and then he won the British Commonwealth European and 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 done it that way. Tyson Fury also d- done the same. Um, I'd like to do it myself also, but um. If obviously the opportunity doesn't come up and you've got to be fast tracked a bit and box other belts, then obviously I don't mind doing that either. Plus, I believe the Lonsdale belt is the best looking belt, the British belt. Looks really it's nice. Like the best looking belt in boxing. Uh, Lerone come down to the gym to do some photos the other day and he brought it down. And uh, just looking at it and holding it, it is the best looking belt in boxing, in my opinion. Brilliant. It's, it must be amazing to have a stable mate with a few of them belts. Again, it gives you that inspiration, that drive. Like I'm gonna bring one to this, to this gym, um, and you know you'll be holding my belt soon as well. Yeah, like um, we're all in the gym, and we we all want the best for each other, and uh, it's good to have that bit of like friendly, that co- competitiveness, you know. Yeah. Um. So we're all all competing, trying to better one another each day, but that's bringing us all on as fighters and and individuals. So seeing them bring the titles in and and keep winning titles every fight and. Like you said, the number number five in the world now, Lerone's European champion. He'll be looking for a big fight, a couple of fights time. He'll be boxing for the world title. I'm sure, Jordan will be too. Also, he's one or two fights away from the world title. Seeing them is making me want to push on and, and and start adding some belts to the collection too. So, I know I'm only young, but um, it'll all come in time. Brilliant. Um, obviously, uh, Jordan's going to be fine for the European. My question to you is. Because I will ask uh, Dave, I'm, I'm meant to be interviewing Dave tomorrow. Uh, yeah. You as a stable mate on Lerone Richards, um, spoke to him, really nice guy. He, he literally lives not too far from me as well. He, what I love about Lerone is he seems so quiet and, and you know, like a bubbly character, but you see yeah, a different side of him when he gets in the ring. And he will fight anyone. My question to you is, who do you want Lerone to fight as a boxing fan? Because at the moment, he's linked, well, there are rumours online, I don't know how true they are. There's, there's rumours of John Ryder, there's rumours of Chris Eubank Jr. And uh, the other one is uh, R- R- Rosario. So, Rosado. Who, who, Rosado, who would you want him to fight? I think, um, I'd like to, on a, for Britain, I'd like to see maybe the Rock and Fielding fight is, is a good fight next. I think he'll get um, it's a good fight, and he'll get a lot of credit for that fight. Um, on the international stage, though, I think Gabriel Rosado just had a good win. Was it the weekend he knocked out that yeah. Uzbekistan? Uh, I think he was world amateur champion, so that was a very good win, and it it makes it exciting. It makes it look good, and if Lerone can get that fight next, possibly over in America, then um, if he does a good job on him, which I believe he can, then that shows to the whole world and over in America sort of gets his name out there and, and starts start getting his name out there over there in the States. And you've got to look, some of the fighters Gabriel Rosado has been in there with, he pushed Danny Jacobs two fights ago to, to a close fight. So if Lerone can go there and do a better job on him, they've got to start talking about his name in with them mix of fighters that Danny Jacobs is. And I know he's, he's the best thing in boxing, but Canelo Alvarez is in that way. And um, once he fights Caleb Plant, he'll have all the belts. Who knows? Will the belts become vacant? Will... We have to defend them, and yeah. he's not. He's European champion now, and he's, I know he's only had a few fights, but he's only won two, three fights away from from them big mega fights. And if you're Lerone Richards, that's the fight you've got to be chasing. Is the Canelo fight? Hundred percent. I echo that as well. I would love to see him fight um, Chris Eubank Jr. If I'm honest, I would love to fight. I would love it at Plough Lane as well. I know that's a yeah. dream of Lerone as well. He deserves that, and uh, you know, getting twenty thousand people in an open stadium in the summer. That would just be unbelievable. Be unbelievable. Be unbelievable. It'd be a dream come true for him. I'm sure every fighter wants to box in the hometown. I'd love to sell out Ellen Road or Headley Stadium one day. So I'm sure he wants to do the same. I was going to ask you that. Is the dream Ellen Road one day? Definitely. Um, 
I was lucky enough to be sat ringside when Josh Warren and Box Lee Selby there, and the atmosphere is unbelievable. I think one of the the Leeds fans, I think, is one of the, one of the best fans in the world. They all get behind their own. They all support whether it's football, rugby, boxing. So, um, I'd love to box there one day. Amazing. I know obviously, it's too close to September, but you know, if you come unscratched in your next fight, and it's only like five, I don't know, four or five weeks away, would you be interested in being in that um, Lara Warrington rematch on the card? A hundred percent for sure. Um, I think from my second pro fight to out in Saudi, that was only maybe three or four weeks. If I come out unscaled, no injuries, I'll be ready to go again in September. So, um, Eddie, if you're watching, we're ready to go. Amazing. If um, Obviously, I know you know Warrington quite well. Um, it was kind of hard to see someone from your hometown mm. lose to Lara that, uh, the same night that you boxed as well. What, in your opinion, what does Warrington need to do differently um, if Lara in the room. Do you think he underestimated them really in this in the first fight? I do think he underestimated them a little bit. Um, I also believe he boxed the wrong fight. Um, everyone keeps going on about these tough Mexicans. Uh, they've been beating a lot of a lot of our UK fighters lately. Um, I think Jordan Gill showed perfectly what you need to do against these Mexicans and yeah. just give them a boxing lesson. You know, um, yeah, they can punch, but the, most of them's got pretty slow feet. Um, I think you've just got to make it an hard night's work from you know. Um, I think Warren and went out there and and tried putting Lara away early, sort of, yeah, underestimated him a little bit. And when when you are fighting that sort of fight, it's uh, it's fifty fifty. It's sort of who lands first. You both stood there in the pocket and you both swinging away, and he got caught with a big shot and he just never recovered from it. So I think this time he just needs to be a bit cleverer, a bit cuter, and maybe box for a few rounds and and try and take take the sting out of Lara's punches, take his legs away, and then if he is going to stop him or put it on him, maybe do it down the stretch, not come out and try and do it straight away. No, I echo that. You um, you can't really trade with a Mexican, you know. You've got, you got to move, use the jab, and uh, just keep moving um, all night, really. Jordan Gill proved that. Dennis McCann that. showed that as well against another Mexican as well. So... You know, you can't really trade with them. If you trade yeah. with them, you, you, can, you can fight with them, but you need to be fighting on your terms. You know, fight yeah. when you want to fight. That's what I believe. Um, you trade in patches when you need to. But if they want to trade, don't trade them. Just just use your skills and, and outbox it and, and making it hard nights work for them. Like you say, when Jordan boxed that wire, he's, he's, he's a tough competitor. He, not so long ago, he gave Nani Odenera to fight. And look what Nani Ardenair just gone and done world champion, 38-year-old. Yeah. That's unbelievable. And I think um, Jordan didn't really get the credit he deserved for that win. I think he gave him a proper box list and he never really, apart from I think it was the fifth round in the corner where he got hit with a couple of shots. I think that they were the only shots where he actually landed with. Apart from that, he, he made it an easy night's work. And to do it to that level of fighter, I think he deserves a lot of credit. I echo that. I echo that. Hopefully Warrington can get the job done, put it to bed um, the, his loss to Lara and move on to bigger honours. Uh, hopefully fight um, Zhang Chu for that, for that title. It was meant to be, obviously, afterwards that got derailed. Yeah. Obviously, that fight can happen again. Or, you know, who knows? He can go on to get his IBF title back and fight the winner of uh, Kit Galahad and um, uh, Jazz Dickens, which will be whoever he fights out of that fight will be a It'll great be fight. Quite... Anyway. Well, the featherweight division is right out at the minute. You've got Gary Russell Jr., yeah. Leo Santa Cruz, I think, still in that division. Josh Warren, and obviously the big fight between Dickens and Galahad. But um, jo um, Jordan's also number four in the world now, so yeah. he's only one fight away from them big fights. So I think it's it's a good mix at world level, but also domestically, some big fights in Britain to be made for world honours. 100%. Hope before I let you go, do you have a message for the fans and what can they expect on August 14th? Um, they can expect a good performance and another win from Healthy Price. So make sure you tune in. The fans who can get there, I look forward to seeing you and putting on a show for you all. Amazing, and we can't wait to see that as well. Hobie, I want to say thank you for joining me today, and uh, it was a pleasure talking to you. I wish you all the best for the rest of your career. Obviously, I'm not saying that as if we're not going to talk again. Hope I can get you on again, especially when oh, you got to win that English title as well. No, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Anytime. Good luck, mate. Uh, speak to you. Yeah. Thank you. Take care. Bye.